the bikes in between. Mauro Schmidt, what a ride he's done today for Switzerland. And this is Matthias Skelmorza. I know it says Jensen on the graphic there, but it's Skelmorza. He was so good the other week. First big victory finally in Luxembourg. And he could find himself on the podium of the World Championships. Could find two quick step riders on the podium of that World Championships as well. Oh. Kudos to Lutsenko. He has not stopped working. Tank's clearly running close to empty there every time we see him. Well, Evenepoel's going to have time to take in the moment in the final couple of kilometres. He's going to have time to celebrate and enjoy this. Here's that long three-quarter turn for the final time. Cheered on. I know they'll all be watching on their smartphones, on their tablets, on the move. They'll know what's happening. There's big screens at a couple of points on the course. And they will know that Remco Evenepoel has put in a performance that will go down in history today as one of the most dominant, I think, we've seen in recent years in World Championships. Here is Lutsenko about to be caught, and what happens now? Lutsenko has to sit on, <laughs> just needs to try and recover as much as he can. These guys will probably no doubt attack each other. I don't think they'll just be happy, apart from Schmidt maybe rolling into the finish and roll down, but I think they'd have to, you're going to expect attack from these groups for that silver medal. Look at these crowds. Great day out, great hosts, well played Australia. The curse of the host nation is going to happen again. It happened to Belgium last year. All of the hope were on them. All of the talk about Evenepoel, Fanart, but only once in the past 40 years has the home nation won. That was Balan in Varese. Today, it's not going to be Australia. Remco Evenepoel with the centre of Wollongong, New South Wales, Australia, in his sights. He is three kilometres away from the finish line. He has a gap of a minute and a half. He's on his way to winning the world title. He did that at the junior level. He bypassed the under-23s and turned pro. He since won a grand tour and a monument. He's 22. Guess who else was 22 when he won his first world title? A certain Mr. Merckx, so no pressure, Remco. He's living up to it right now. I think all the comparisons that we fly around, who's the next Merckx, this, that and the other, it's bit, happened so many times, so uh, many too times. Too many times, obviously. Yeah, but I think we've got quite a good comparison. Someone that can do one-day racing and Grand Tours in the way that this man can. It's unbelievable. I think him, Pogaccia, are well up there. Very quickly, Brian, we're living in a privileged era, aren't we, at the minute, I think, watching cycling. It's never been better. It hasn't been better, and I think it's down to technology and, and data now, because this wouldn't have happened in that era. Um, producing the numbers, you, you have to earn your stripes. You have to ride on the front, get the bottles. This is the team leader. Now that the youngsters are... Are, Whoa, um, the you know, getting again. their opportunity. <laughs> and we've got moves. I don't know where they're going. Oh, wow, together. they've caught Ben Tullet. Wow. So they're through that second group now, so they've got that group in front of them. Oh. And that is Wat van Aert sitting on the wheel of Alberto Betiol. But a long way up the road, over two and a half minutes up the road, is Remco Evenepoel into the final two kilometres now. When did that happen? <laughs> Or watch the fight for the medals, maybe, or at least the fight for the top ten positions in just a moment. Might be a big ass with the medals. They've still got another minute to catch yet. But depends how much they look at each other in that group of four now chasing on. But moving uphill for the final time is Remco Evenepoel, being cheered, fated, admired, and enjoyed. He has put in a performance to savour today as the young Belgian. Gents, a final word from you as we approach the final K. I mean, chapeau. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, Unbelievable. What else can you say what they were not said already for the last month? That he's exceptional. Not going to do any comparisons. This is Remco Evnico. Simple as that. Here he, he goes then. He is 
putting himself into being one of the greats at 22 years of age. Red kite, Flam Rouge, one kilometre to go for Remco Evenepoel. Long talked up as the next big thing. Yes, another, next Eddie Merckx. Well, he's going to be the same age as the great when he won his title. Now he realises, now he shows us. A shake of the head, a smile, a punch of the air. It's been quite a dramatic day. Possibly an understatement in Australia. All of the off-the-bike incident that effectively took out one of the protagonists, one of the favourites. Then the French launching it early on. The break-up of the race. Even to pull himself going and then building a big gap. But he's about to take the final turn, see the finish line, and after Remco reigned in Spain, a first Grand Tour for Belgium for 44 years, it's going to be a first world title in a decade. Remco Evenepoel, it's a year late, but cycling is coming home. Belgium have it, Belgium have it, it's Rainbow Remco. Evenepoel, the world champion in Australia.